All right, and let's get started with our breathing. Any position that allows you con to connect to the sound and sensation of your own breath. to track the physical movement of the body caused by the act of breathing. And if you're not feeling physical movement, relax your belly. Very often in our unconscious breath, whether it's because of posture, we're sitting, with collapsed lungs or because of physical or emotional stress or holding our abdomen rigid, the breath will be higher up, which does stimulate the heart rate, pick up the heart rate, bring us more into fight or flight response, sympathetic nervous system. So even though some of our yoga practice will be active, we will start from an extremely calm place by inviting the breath lower. And it might take several rounds or the whole five minutes of us sitting here for the belly to finally relax and to start to move. That's okay, just be patient with it. If you force it, it'll just tighten up more. And once you've got the feel of the breath, filling up the whole torso. We'll add a little banda work. Though if just coming in here to soften the belly, soften the ribs and uh, feeling the breath move is a perfect practice for you right now, tune me out and stay with that as we move on to breath work with energetic locks. Bandas are the locks in the body that create an energetic container. So as we seal our breath between the pelvic floor and the throat, we will alternately or sometimes always engage these locks. One of them is lifting the pelvic floor, the mula band, sometimes described as squeezing the anus and genitals, sometimes described as scooping the low belly off the pubic bone. It's that container right below the navel that we're trying to seal around. So first couple breaths, we'll explore that. So relax your low belly completely. Let your breath expand the low belly. Breathe all the way out. And then hold the breath out for just a moment as you draw the pelvic floor up off the floor, or if you're lying down, just squeeze it up into your body. Squeeze anus genitals. And feel for scooping the energy from your tailbone up towards your belly button. When you can't hold your breath out, relax your belly, fill up with breath. Take a couple rounds of that on your own. Easy breathing, not holding so long that this starts to be a struggle. When you're empty of breath, engaging your root lock, feeling for firming up pelvic floor and scooping the contents up. And you're welcome to continue to focus down here on Mula Banda, which is probably the most common lock we'll use in our standing poses. If you're ready to add Uddiyana Banda, next time you're holding the breath out, 
You'll drop on pelvic floor, scoop the low belly off the pubic bone, off the pelvis, and continue to pull up so you feel your diaphragm draw up towards heart space. Like when we do Uddiyana Kriya, many of you who take my class are familiar with this. And then when you have to breathe, relax all that so you can breathe in. Uh, as you're empty, pulling up from your tailbone, like you're scooping the energy right up the front of your spine to your heart, suspending it with a lifted heart, shoulders back, relaxing when you're ready to breathe in. Maybe two or three more rounds on your own. And for well, about five more rounds of this, we'll add Jalandharaba on the throat lock. Some of you may have noticed when you pull all that up, you get a little like choke in your throat as the pressure moves up. So we'll tuck the chin down. We'll engage Mula Bandha, Uddiyana Bandha, and then tuck chin down towards collarbones. That creates the top of the seal. And then when you have to breathe and relax all of that. Sometimes I refer to this as Mahabanda, the great seal, using all three locks. So beyond the energetic benefits of being able to contain and collect the energy we generate by doing yoga poses and keeping our mind focused in the yoga poses. These are good to be able to activate because they are very protective of the spine, of the low back, especially the pelvis. As some of the yoga poses start to pull our limbs in different directions, we stay connected to center. This is center. All right, if you haven't already, return to your normal breath. Just notice how you feel. We'll come into a seated spinal twist. So turn up your ujjayi breath if you're coming up to sitting. We'll put right foot on the floor so right knee's bent. Totally up to you whether you want to straighten left leg out. If you've been sitting with knees crossed, it might want to break. If you prefer tucking left foot in, that's fine. We're twisting into the right thigh, left hand or elbow to knee. And as you plug your tailbone down into the earth, and lift the rib cage, the heart up, keep the shoulders back. With these breaths, you might play with engaging your bandhas and notice how they affect the twist. Maybe they make a little more space between the bones of the spine as you spiral. And if you're not feeling anything, that's fine. You just start to imagine, you focus your breath where you do feel it. One thing that's been very clear about Branda practice to me is once I think I know what the bandhas are, it changes again. We're working with the energetic body. Exhale to unwind, straighten your right leg out, draw your left knee back, knee out to the side so we can forward fold over the right leg. You might need to prop something underneath your left knee. Belly button aiming towards right knee, bow your head. Right knee might be very bent for this opening forward fold, that's fine. Direct your breath into the back body, all those muscles along the spine and the ribs expanding away from spine. And as you breathe out, you might engage, lifting up your pelvic floor, your low belly. No throat lock in this one. Keep your neck relaxed, tuck your tail down, use your belly, your bandhas to pull you back up. 
and pick your left knee up so you can twist into it. Right leg might stay extended or if you're tucking it behind your heel, go ahead, do what you did on side one and then twist into the left thigh. Exhale, unwind, straighten your left leg out, open your right knee out to the side. It doesn't have to be back too far. Hips are still squared towards the left leg. So it's a very modified Janushirasana. You bow over left leg just to turn on the sensations in back body and there might be lots. Maybe your hamstring starts screaming, then you back out so you can send breath and come into a rational conversation with the back of your body. Keep your neck relaxed as you come back up to straight spine and lie down on your back. Just a couple of rounds of elbow to knee abdominals. Lie on your back. We'll start with feet on the floor, knees bent, hands interlaced behind base of skull. Elbows pointing slightly up to ceiling to cradle head and neck as you curl off the mat, supporting head and hands, maybe gently press head into hands or release the throat. Take a breath down into low back, press it flat. Exhale, point both elbows at your left thigh, pick your left foot off the floor, knee reaching straight up for the ceiling and your belly pulling down. Inhale, center, both feet on the floor, both shoulders off the mat. Exhale, twist right. Pull your belly to spine. Inhale, center, feet down, head and shoulders are lifted, tailbone tucks into body a little. Exhale, twist left. Inhale, center, feet down, head and shoulders up. Exhale, twist right. Do up to five more to each side on your own breath rhythm. And some of you want to start with both feet off the floor and extend the opposite leg, that's fine. After waking up your belly, your lowest parts of your belly with your breath, notice how this is a continuation of that meditation. Yes, it can bring up a lot more emotion and story and sensation. As you focus on the breath, on engaging the low abdominals, just watch that. Don't get attached to what it feels like, what you think is happening. Be with what you're doing. And when your rounds are complete, you'll rest your feet on the floor, knees rest against each other, hands on your belly. Let your belly move a lot with your breath. Completely relaxed, completely receptive. Bridge pose, separate your knees so they're right over your feet, feet hips width apart. Slightly wider if you're protecting knees, slightly narrower if you're protecting low back. Arms relax alongside body. I recommend palms up with the shoulders wide if that feels all right to your shoulders. So your arms remember to stay relaxed and let your legs and butt do all the work. Press your feet down, curl your tailbone up, and inhale, press hips to sky. Exhale, lengthen sacrum and tailbone forward towards your knees. Lengthen knees and thighs towards front of mat.
Belly will stay engaged here, won't balloon with the breath in order to protect low back. But you can feel your breath work down your spine even as it expands heart, upper rib cage. Exhale, reconnect to earth, press your feet down. Two more breaths here. Slowly lower your spine all the way down, top to bottom. And if it's right for your joints, open your feet a little bit wider, open your arms to a cactus, a goalpost shape, and do a little windshield wipe. Knees switch side to side, head can also turn. If swishy movements do not work for your joints, there's way too much grinding, then just find a still place and let your breath do the swish swish internally. All right, roll yourself off to one side and crawl to all fours. We'll start in dolphin prelude, and then we'll move on to dolphin prep and or flash prep. Dolphin prelude, come down onto your elbows. Wrap your hands around your upper arms. Clasp your hands in front of you, keeping the elbows where you measure them, and then walk your knees back so you can rest your head down on the mat. Tail stays in the air. Heart is sinking to stretch the shoulders. And you feel for softness between shoulder blades. For some of you, if being on your knees or putting your weight on your shoulders in this direction doesn't work for you, you can find a wall. I'm gonna crawl over to this wall. I think this leaves me on camera. And instead of being on the floor, put your elbows on the wall, stick your tail way out, let your heart sink. And of course, you'll go call this shower pose because as you let the tension move out of back of heart. You just imagine the shower water rushing down over you. I'm not sure if I cued it, but those of you on the floor, you're welcome to pick your hands up, pointing knuckles at sky without moving elbows. And at any point during practice, if you come to a place where you're starting to milk the pose and feel it with breath, don't feel like you have to move into the next pose. Some of you maybe have never been in this position before and you're still exploring it, then stay here. Some of you ready to move into dolphin, lifting up out of the shoulders, then shift your weight back forward to bring your hands back down. Make sure your elbows are still directly under shoulder joints. Your choice whether hands are interrupted Healthy, you're welcome to work with palms down directly in front of elbows, forearms stay parallel to each other. Press the ground away to lift out of the shoulders, hang your head, head stays off the floor, and you feel for pushing the ground away with wrists and elbows so your head does have plenty of room to dangle. Hips lean back to stretch back out of shoulders. Optional tucking your toes and lifting knees off the mat. We'll go into another two rounds of dolphin. So if this round you want to keep knees down, do that. Send breath into the shoulder socket. Those of you in full dolphin, find your bandhas. Lift from pelvic floor off pubic bone up towards heart and see if that helps you to lengthen your tail back away from shoulders. If you're in full dolphin, set your knees down. One round of bird's wings, sit back on your knees. If kneeling's not good for you, sit any way that's comfortable so your palms can be up, elbows against your ribs. Direct your breath into the upper back. And then exhale, squeeze the shoulder blades into the upper back as you rotate the arms, the biceps out. Squeeze the elbows in toward your ribs. 
Drag shoulders away from ears. Relax your arms. Next two rounds of dolphin might be exactly what you just did. Measure your elbow distance, choose your hand position, stay in prep or rise all the way up. Some of you are ready to start to learn the one arm version of dolphin, which starts with flash prep. You can watch. I know some of you have done this with me before, so if you'd like to join me, just breathe into your own body. Don't let me distract you. So hands will start in front of the elbow. So your arms are like two train tracks. And we'll slide one hand back. I'll slide my right hand back along the train track until my palm can be on the floor directly under my elbow, back form parallel, uh, perpendicular to the ground. And then just like dolphin prep, hanging head, pressing ground away with left elbow, right hand, left elbow squeezing in towards head to lift out of shoulder. It could be a very rehabilitative pose as you send breath into left shoulder, if it creates pain, I don't recommend it. Do one of the dolphin preludes or preps we did before. If you want to start bearing weight on that left shoulder, you're welcome to keep lifting these up. Right that hand is there for support, but most of the work is for keeping that left elbow in and out into the ground. So it looks like you guys have set up already. If you are waiting for me, those of you I can't see, come on to elbows, measure elbow distance, put your palms down in front of your elbows, watch your right hand slide back underneath your right elbow. So your palm is pressing into the ground, your elbows up over your wrist, and then press into the ground to hump your upper back, lift out of your shoulders, and use your own breath to feel if it makes sense to lift your knees up. Those of you who've been inside one for a while, you'll come down, remeasure your elbow distance, reset your arms, then slide your left hand back on its train track for side two. Some of us are working with injuries. One shoulder is very different from the other. Treat it as a different arm, a different body part. No expectations of what the external expression of this pose looks like. I want you to really feel into the shoulders itself. itself. Once you're done with your rounds, come into bird's wing. Kneeling or come up to standing. We're coming up to standing next, so if you don't want to kneel, you can come all the way up. Bird's wing with the elbow squeezing into ribs. Direct your breath into the back of the heart. Exhale, squeeze shoulders into back of heart. Squeeze arm bones into the shoulder blades. Maybe you feel those little muscles behind your armpits start to fire. Those are great stabilizers for your shoulder. And come stand at the front of your mat in Tadasana. Turn up your ujjayi breath if it got quiet. Hands at heart center. Thumbs sensing your heartbeat. Feet on the earth, tail down. Low belly lifting. Now in some yogas, we keep the mula bandha engaged through the whole standing series to protect the back and for energetic purposes. So those of you exploring bandha work are welcome to play with that. I'll remind you. If I've gotten way too quick with this bandha talk, tune me out. Just do the physical part. Oh. Testing, testing. I forget what I said, so I think the universe that I was talking about. Let's move. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. I've got a partner here today checking in with my sounds. So that's who I'm talking to if you're wondering. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, chaturanga. High plank to low plank. Inhale, upper dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. 
Couple breaths in down dog. Optional, Mahabanda, tucking chin into throat, throat lock. Scooping low belly off pubic bone. Udiana, squeezing the sit bones into the tail straight back, Mulaban. Still breathing while you keep your bandhas engaged. Inhale, step or jump to front of mat. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, Samastiti. Two more, Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Few breaths here with the option to engage your locks. I believe what I was cut off from saying was that some of this Banda talk might be esoteric for those of you who just came to move. And that's cool. Tune that out. Your body will pick up what it needs to pick up. Inhale, step or jump forward. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, samastitihi. Once more, inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Keep your ujjayi breath running up and down your spine. Step or jump forward, inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, Samastiti. Two rounds, Surya Namaskar B, Sun Salutes B. Utkatasana, inhale, sit back in chair. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, Chaturanga, or step right into down dog and breathe in with us. Breathe out. Remember, you can skip these sun salutes and do cats, cows, or take a still position and breathe with us. Warrior one, inhale, right foot forward. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward. Exhale, downward. Left foot. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward. Exhale, downward. One more sun. I'm sorry. Inhale, come forward. Thank you. Exhale, fold. Utkatasana. Inhale. Exhale, Samastiti. One more sun B, though if you're already warm, come into child's pose and breathe with us. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward. Exhale, downward. Warrior one. Inhale, right foot forward. 
Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward. Exhale, downward. Left foot. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale. Exhale. Warrior one. Step right foot forward. Arms up. Optional, pressing palms together and looking up. Find your Mula Bandha and Uddiyana Bandha. If you prefer to do cactus arms or any other gaze, do what you need to do to take full breaths without straining your neck. Most importantly, don't strain your neck. Warrior two, exhale, turn to side of mat. Both arms to wings energized. If you're choosing to gaze over your right hand, make sure you feel your left finger is reaching away. Triangle. Inhale, straighten the right leg. Move your feet a little closer together carefully. Then exhale, right hand down to shin, or if you're using a block, put your hand on a block. Left arm reaches directly away. Tailbone reaching towards left heel, heart breathing away from that. And then exhale, spin the left ribs back. If you choose to look up, that's cool. Keep your chin a little bit tucked towards shoulder. If you prefer to look down, look straight ahead or hang your head. Those all work. The key is to make a conscious choice. No unconscious tension starting to build in the neck. Warrior two, inhale, bend right knee. Exhale, your vinyasa. Now, especially, I mean, any vinyasa. If chaturanga up dog's not working for your shoulders, step into a forward fold or do the hokey pokey, but take full breaths in and out. Left foot forward, warrior one. Option, palms pressed, looking up. Exhale, warrior two. Triangle, straighten left leg, heel toe, feet a little closer together. Inhale to lengthen, exhale left hand to shin or block or hip or big toe. As long as you're wide through collarbones. Besides conscious head position, conscious hands. Whether you choose to keep the fingers together turning your fingers into a kind of a spade, projecting the energy from your heart, or spread the hand wide to gather the energy is up to you. You might not feel the energy, but make a conscious choice. Warrior two, inhale, bend left knee. Exhale, your vinyasa. Warrior two, right foot forward. Eagle warrior. Right arm on top of left. Hug you variation with hands on shoulders. Might be 
the right one for you today. Or if you can really get the upper arm bones to cross, then you thread elbows, wrists. Exhale, unwind your arms. Hands to hips, straighten your right leg, turn the right toes in so your feet are parallel or a little pigeon toed facing side of mat. Hands hold waist. Inhale, squeeze your elbows back, squeeze your shoulders back, lift your heart. Keep your fingers digging into your belly as you come into your forward fold. Squeeze your elbows and shoulders back, tuck your chin into your throat, look towards belly button, pull belly in. This is a Maha Bandha moment, squeezing sit bones, squeezing low belly, squeezing chin to throat. Squeeze shoulders behind you. Hands to the earth. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Your choice, relax neck or throat lock. If you're choosing throat lock, engage all the locks. Twisting lunge. Walk your hands towards the right foot. Set the back knee down. Left elbow crosses right thigh. Prayer hands or fist with the bottom hand. I'll leave that up to you. If you're newer to the forest yoga hands, we make a fist with the left hand, the bottom hand, so we can keep that wrist straight. Then as you press off with the top palm to open the chest, open out of the left armpit, your wrist isn't taking all the pressure. Optional, tuck your back toes under and straighten back knee either into crescent or warrior one twist. That's optional. Optional to open the arms, left hand to the floor, but outside your right foot, right hand to sky. Of course you can put left hand on the other side of foot. Some of you extended arms will also extend the right arm over your ear. Turn the palm or pinky finger down to the floor. Long line from right pinky finger out through left heel. One more breath. Exhale, your vinyasa. Warrior two, left foot forward. Eagle warrior, left on top of right. Conscious neck position, whether you look straight ahead, relax the head forward or look up. Exhale, unwind your arms, hands to hips, straighten your left leg, turn the left toes into parallel or a little pigeon toe. Prasarita Padatanasana C, interlacing hands behind your back or holding your strap between your hands. You can pull on the strap and let the shoulder blades dig together. If neither of those shapes works for your shoulders, if the other shape we did, holding the waist, squeezing shoulders back works, come back into that. And optional to fold forward. To release the bind, I recommend letting your hands touch your pelvis and then come down your legs. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Twisting lunge to left foot. Walk your hands towards the left foot, lower right knee down onto mat. Right elbow crosses left thigh. Optional, tuck back toes, inhale, straighten right leg. 
Optional, opening in the arms, either spreading wings or full extension, left arm crossing ear. Take a breath. Exhale, take your vinyasa. Low lunge, right foot forward, back knee down. That means you can lower your knees down first and lower, step the right foot forward. By the way, you can over, always lower your knees down first. Fingertips will stay on the mat where you can put them on blocks. Lift your heart, drop your hips. Both feet active, gently pressing into earth. Spread the right toes off the mat. Pyramid, hands down, tuck back toes. You can step left foot forward a little bit, like triangle. Left toes are angled out to the side. Now your hips are squared towards the edge of your mat, belly button over right knee. Here's a good place to put your hands on blocks so you can work a long spine. Instead of straining to come down, think of lengthening out. Even if hands are on the mat, think of lengthening heart towards toes and then relax your neck. Bend your right knee. Let's come into runner's lunge. Bend your right knee, slide left leg back. Staying on the left toes. Body hovering over the right thigh, spine lengthening forward, left heel pressing back, optional extension, fist with the left hand, resting knuckles on the earth, right arm reaching forward, thumb pointing to ceiling. Body still square to the earth, pull your belly in. Exhale, your vinyasa. Low lunge, left foot forward. Back knee down, toes untucked. Spread all 10 toes. Gently press both feet into the mat as you drop your tail and lift your heart. For some of your knees, it'll be important to keep your knee over your ankle if that feels right. If your knees are healthy and your hips open, your knee might bend forward. Just make sure it doesn't feel like pressure in the knee. Weight is in the left heel. Parsvachanasana pyramid. Hands down, step the right foot two and a half feet behind the left, toes angled out to the side. Belly facing left toes for your deep hamstring stretch. Runner's lunge. Slide the right toes all the way back as far as you can. Here, left knee is over your left ankle. Get a sense of squeezing down at your mula band and then stretching your inner thighs away from each other. Pull your belly in. Optional extension, fist with right hand, left arm forward. As you press your thumb up, keep your left ribs hugging in. Forward fold, hand down, step the right foot forward, fold into your legs. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Again, inhale, heart forward, shoulders back, tail back. 
Exhale, relax your neck or tuck your chin, look towards navel. Come all the way up to stand. Uttita Asta Parangustasana. Standing on left foot, draw right knee to chest. Some of you taking the right big toe and extending or starting to extend towards a toe lock extension. If this is needed chest for you today with your toes on the earth, hips square, cool. Everyone find your mula bandha, tail down and then scoop the contents of the pelvis up. Exhale, right foot or knee out to the side. Option to look over left shoulder. Then find one spot to set your eyes on. Steady eyes, steady mind. Exhale back to center. Floating leg, both hands to your waist, point your toes. It's okay if your toes are on the earth. Pull your belly in. Shoulders back, chin down. Bottom ribs moving back into your belly. Maybe you dig them back with your fingertips. Good. Knee to chest, hands hold on to shin, take a breath and swish it up. Samastitihi. Left knee to chest. Again, this can be knee to chest. This can be knee to chest or a toe lock extension. And whatever the body does, so you can keep the eyeballs set on a point. Stay with your breath. Exhale, open leg, knee out to the left. Option to look over right shoulder. Exhale, back to center. Both hands take your waist, point your toes. Squeezing foot like you're making a fist. Gaze at your big toe. Shoulders back, chin down. Bottom ribs in your belly. Knee to chest, inhale. Swish it up. Samastitihi. Half sun or full sun salute. Inhale, arms up. Actually, that's Utkatasana. Exhale, bend your knees. Inhale, lift your ribs, lift your heart. Exhale, forward fold. Some of you will visit crow before you take vinyasa. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, chaturanga, or start to lower yourself down to your seat because we're going to the sitting poses next. If you are taking your vinyasa or playing with crow, Complete breaths, no hurry. We'll come into Dandasana. Once seated, straighten your legs out in front of you. No hurry if you're still vinyasing. Leg straight. Feet flex, big toes touch if that does not hurt your back. Hands press into the ground by your hips to get taller. Mahabanda, scoop pelvic floor off the earth, low belly off your pelvis, lift your heart, shoulders back, chin tucks the throat, eyes softly gazing at big toes, breath strong. Relax all that pressure. Paschimottanasana, inhale, arms forward or up. Exhale, fold over your legs. If you can reach your big toes, do yoga toe lock. If you're holding onto your legs or want to hold on behind your knees, that works too. This is as much a spinal stretch as it is a hamstring stretch. So feel for lengthening out more than pushing down.
Inhale, glance towards toes. Exhale, come up. Janushirsasana A, draw your right knee back. This time, right knee as wide as you can with your toes still touching left thigh. You can still put something underneath your right knee if it's not down on the earth. Turn your belly towards the left leg. So you might already feel there's a little twist before you forward fold. If that's no good for your back, then don't pull your knee back as far. Keep your hips squared. But those of you working with the right knee open, take a moment. Press your right thigh out and down as you turn your belly towards left thigh and lengthen forward. Find your, ba your bandhas. Squeeze at anus genitals. Lift your low belly up. And then exhale, fold over your leg, maybe keeping the bandhas engaged. Inhale, glance towards toes. Exhale, come all the way up. Right leg straightens out. Left knee opens as wide as you deem appropriate for your hips. But keep the toes or foot in contact with right leg. Turn your belly towards right knee. Left hand, if this feels safe for your joints, presses the left thigh out and down. Feel for lifting out of your hips as you spiral. And then fold over your right leg. If you are using a strap for this, I recommend use the strap to lengthen out of your low back rather than to jam you down. Take advantage of that drawing of the rib cage heart forward. Reach your tail back. Plug your tailbone down, pull your belly in. Come back up to your seat. Left leg straight, right knee open. A few different variations. I'll give you a few different options. You might choose to do the same thing you just did. See if it feels different, because it will. It's a different moment in time. Some of you, Janu B, sitting on your right heel. That will induce your mula bond. Or right foot lotus. And for those of you right foot lotus, if you want right arm behind your back to catch left foot, if you have a strap or something you can wrap around your foot, you can catch that. And then attempting to turn your belly towards left thigh, forward fold. So all that bondo work we we're doing, lifting, Squeezing in, your foot's doing that for you here now, digging right into your low belly. All right, so whatever variation you're in, once you choose the pose, full attention to your breath. Let go of any striving, needing to be anywhere else. Those stories, am I doing this right? Am I doing this anyway? You'll start to notice how repetitive that is. Glance at your toes, squeeze your tail to pull you back up. Right leg straight, mirror whatever you did on side one. So whether you did left knee open, sat on the left foot, or put it into a lotus. Assuming you're not having issues, injuries on the side that prevents a mirror image. Do not push into injuries. That does not heal them. My teacher said, you cannot hurt yourself and heal yourself at the same time.
Inhale, glance towards your toes. Exhale, use your bandhas and your abdominals to lift you back up. Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet come together, knees open. If it feels safe for you to roll the feet open, tops the feet towards the floor and press your knees down, you can do that. Many of us to protect knees will keep the bottoms of the feet pressed together actively. Inhale, sit up tall. Any variation of this forward fold. Maybe you keep coming forward with a straight spine or maybe you let the feet go, let the head go. And let go of effort except for slowing and filling up with breath. And come out the way you came in, whether straight or rounded. Finally, Padmasana, lotus, half lotus, or cross-legged seat. If you're choosing full lotus, we usually do right foot and then left on top. Backs of hands on your knees. Thumb and index finger touch. The rest of the fingers touch each other. Point to earth. Jnana Mudra. Inhale, lift your heart. Shoulders back. Engage all your locks. Pulling up from pelvic floor. Up through the diaphragm. Down with the chin. Eyes almost closed. Or you can close them. Soft. But very big, very slow breaths. Release all those locks. Shavasana. Once you've set up your resting position, you can rest your hands or your tension once again on the belly, low belly. Now letting go of any bandhas, any holding. Let your belly once again start to balloon and soften with your last conscious breaths. If you'd like to hold one breath in before you let the conscious breathing go itself, you are welcome to do that. Or simply let the breath slip into its natural rhythm. Watch it go.
Take a slow, full breath all the way down into your belly. As you exhale, feel the weight of your body held by the earth. There's any areas of temperature, of pressure. You can start to wake your physical body. You can start by moving fingers and toes and let those movements grow. And I recommend easing over to a side your less injured side to press you up to sitting with a relaxed neck. If there's another way that's easier for you to sit, the ease is important. We'll meet sitting with our palms pressed together the thumbs against your sternum, lift your heart. Loka, Samasta, Sukino, Bhavantu. May all beings live in peace. May we all know ease. Namaste.